What's up, guys? I'm Chris, your NFL writer here at Occupy Fantasy, here with a look at the final day of preseason week two here in NFL DFS on FanDuel and DraftKings. First things first, if you're not already, please subscribe to the channel because we're going to have live videos or recorded videos every single day for the rest of the preseason next week. And then, of course, we'll be rolling out all of our content for the regular season starting in September. So you're not going to want to miss that. We are closing in on 10,000 subscribers. And I know that Brian will be doing a giveaway on the channel once we hit that number. So to make sure you're included in the pool of users that is eligible to receive giveaway prizes, you need to be subscribed to the channel as well. On to tonight's action. We have two games kicking off at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have the Green Bay Packers taking on the Denver Broncos. And we have the New Orleans Saints taking on the San Francisco 49ers. Early, I'm um, recording this about 9 a.m. on Sunday morning here. Uh, Denver is favored by seven points at home tonight. And then San Francisco is a slight one point favorite in their matchup as well. So I do think by far you're going to see uh, the quarterback I have on the screen here, Bo Nix, be the most popular play at the quarterback position. He looked pretty good last week for the Broncos in his NFL debut. And we are expecting Nix to get uh, basically the same playing time that he had last week again here. Uh, Bronix had 47% of the snaps last week. Zach Wilson, 39%. And presumptive starter, Jared Stidham, 14%. Uh, since Nix is the rookie on the roster here, even though he is starting today, we do expect him to still be treated by Sean Payton as the QB2, and therefore he will get the 50 to 60% of snaps treatment. So we're expecting... Knicks up to halftime, potentially beyond that. Uh, feels like he has the best upside on the slate as a result, with Denver being the biggest favorite and having the uh, highest implied team total on this slate at 23 points. So I do think if you're beginning your low-risk, high-risk lineups tonight, Bo Nix at the top of the table at the quarterback position to consider. Running back is going to be a little difficult tonight, but I do think one of the better spots to consider is the Green Bay Packers backfield. Even though they are big underdogs, we're not really concerned about game script as much here in preseason as we are with playing time. I do think Emmanuel Wilson is slated to lead this team in playing time this evening. He did lead the Packers in snaps last week with 34% of snaps. Trailing him were rookie Marshawn Lloyd, 22%, Jarvie and Howard at 17%, uh, Ellis Merriweather and A.J. Dillon at 11% of snaps each, and then starter Josh Jacobs at 5%. But what we know from Coach LaFleur this week is that the Packers are not going to be playing any of their starters this week at all, so you can cross Josh Jacobs off, and we think that means you can cross A.J. Dillon off, potentially, as the RB1B in this offense. Uh, Marshawn Lloyd hurt his hamstring last week, and he hasn't practiced all week. So he is going to be out this week. We also uh, have seen that in practice reports that Howard has hurt his ankle and he will also not be playing this week. We're not expecting him to suit up. So there are just three running backs that we think are likely to play in this game this week. Emmanuel Wilson, who I think is the best play here in this backfield. But then there is also Ellis Merriweather. And then there's also Nate McCrary, who you don't see eligible to play here in the DFS player pool, but the Packers did sign McCrary this week as some depth. So he could potentially play. Maybe A.J. Dillon is eligible uh, to play if they feel like they're a little thin here. But the bottom line here, trends and availability at the position suggests that Emmanuel Wilson is going to be the best play at running back for Green Bay in their matchup with the Denver Broncos tonight. So I would comfortably slot Emmanuel Wilson into my lineups this evening. There are a couple of units that we think are going to be thin at wide receiver on this slate, and I am going to be sticking with the Green Bay Packers. They are resting their starters this week, so that means we are not expecting any of Jaden Reed, Dontavian Wicks, Romeo Dobbs, or Christian Watson to play today. Uh, they only have six wide receivers available to play, uh, which make that's pretty thin for a preseason rotation. Last week, we saw uh, this group of receivers led by Grant DuBose, play the most snaps for the Green Bay Packers. DuBose actually had seven targets for 106 air yards last week. We do have our preseason opportunity dashboard here uh, on OccupyFantasy.com that is available to all subscribers of the website. And we can actually look at the preseason targets. And you see here DuBose had seven targets, 106 air yards, 15.1 
yard average depth of target, targeted on 23% of the snaps that he played. Makes him, from an opportunity standpoint, an extremely interesting play. However, these next two guys on here with four targets each, Bo Melton and Malik Keith, actually did play more snaps than DuBose last week at 61% and 59% respectively. So I do think there's actually a little bit of high-risk upside with playing one of Melton or Heath over DuBose here on DraftKings tonight. Uh, what you're going to see is anyone that had a really decent game last week, the field is going to flock to again this week. So with DuBose having like 11 points, which is a lot for a preseason slate last week, he's probably going to be pretty popular again tonight here, guys. So I do think Malik Heath or Bo Melton probably also very, very viable plays in this wide receiver room. And uh, I think any three of these guys you can't go wrong with in, uh, in low-risk contests because we're expecting playing time opportunity to be condensed around these guys once again here this evening. Now, I also have a San Francisco wide receiver in here. Tay Martin led the NFL in air yards last week, uh, which obviously uh, is not something that we can rely on week to week in preseason like we can in the regular season. But he also played 70% of the snaps uh, had 123 air yards on seven targets, which, as I mentioned, led the NFL. So I do think Tay Martin represents the San Francisco wide receiver group as the safest potential option. But we also do have Trent Taylor, who played a ton out of the slot last week, and he should also fly a little bit more under the radar than Martin based off of his profile, not looking as good data-wise going into this game. Uh, we are going to see the starters briefly for the 49ers today, according to Kyle Shanahan. Not entirely sure what that's going to mean for Debo Samuel. However, we are confident that each of Brandon Ayuk and Ricky Pearsall will not be playing because they have not been practicing this week. So the thing to be aware of with San Francisco wide receivers is we may be seeing Debo Samuel enter the picture here, and that will probably take away a little bit of the opportunity for this group as a whole. But I still think these back of the roster wide receivers that led in preseason week one will probably lead again here in opportunities in preseason week two, because that is historically how Kyle Shanahan has deployed his wide receivers in preseason games. Now at the tight end position, Lucas Krull had four targets last week for the Denver Broncos. Uh, he actually Heads into this slate with uh, a tremendous amount of opportunities on his side. I believe he had the most attractive role for a tight end uh, on this slate in the NFL last week. So we expect him to see a decent amount of opportunities once again with the Denver tight ends. One thing we learned last week is that Nate Adkins is operating in more of a hybrid fullback type role. So not as many receiving opportunities as we initially thought potentially coming his way. So we are going to focus on Kroll as the best Denver tight end to play, but keep an eye on Hunter Camp Moyer because he also saw a decent amount of targets last week. Another tight end opportunity on the board for you uh, is Cameron Lechu here. He actually led San Francisco last week with 61% of snaps played at the position, and I think he will actually end up being a fairly popular play at the position tonight as well. Big picture for a slate like this. Once again, mentioned at the top of the video, I'm recording this at about 9 a.m. here on the East Coast on Sunday morning. This is a very news-driven slate, right? Preseason DFS is very, very news-driven. No salary to worry about. So we're going to get things that come out pre-locked that actually may shift the priority of things that you should be considering for your lineups tonight. I know that Brian and the team will have you covered in our Discord, which you can become a member of by subscribing to the channel and helping us get to the 10,000 subscriber mark. It's just $2.99 a month to become a YouTube member and get access to our Discord. And you don't have to think very far into the past to see uh, how slate-altering news comes in in preseason. Yesterday, we learned Michael Penix was not going to be playing for the Falcons during preseason warm-ups for the afternoon slate, for example. Something like that, I'm not sure what it's going to be, is probably going to happen once again tonight. So you're not going to want to miss all of the live commentary in our Discord from our staff about how to prepare for this evening's action as well. But for now, this is just a brief look at some of the top plays that we think the field is going to be condensed on this evening. And really appreciate you guys for checking out this video. And I wish you the best of luck here as we wrap up preseason week two in the NFL. We'll be back next week with some more videos for you for preseason week three.